Hi guys, today we're going to talk about the uh, Renogy 60 amp DC to DC charger. This is the Rego version, which is bi-directional, which allows you to charge both the house batteries from the alternator and the starter battery from the house batteries under certain conditions. So we're used to that type of behavior with the old VSRs, the voltage sensing relays, or the intelligent split charge relays, which were always dual, not always, but most often dual sensing. So they would be able to charge either way, depending on which battery bank was full and which battery bank needed some energy. Not so with the DC-DC chargers. So Renogy are saying they're exclusively the only bi-directional, but there is a version out from Sterling, which is a similar size, I think it's 70 amps, not 60 amp, um, but it also claims to do both functions. So let's have a look see what we've got inside. I have already looked inside because that's the kind of guy I am. And inside we have the uh, workshop manual, the installation manual. There is a set of uh, contacts for various support groups. There are some stickers for the van windows. And there is a e-warranty card with a QRF code, which you can join the community and register your product and track your warranty claims. So all good stuff. We'll go through some of that later on. There is uh, a small packet of screws to secure the unit to the bulkhead. And within inside there is a ignition cable, which you plug into the unit. So this has to be joined to your ignition to make sure you've got positive supply. So when you start the engine, this will power the Renogy unit. There are also a battery temperature sensing unit. Um, I believe this is only for the AGM batteries too, and it also plugs in to the top of the unit as well. The unit comes in a secure box, lovely uh, polystyrene protected. This was delivered by a courier, by the way, so you know, that's, that's how it comes. It's wrapped in a plastic bag and all looks good. Take those covers off. And it is a lovely metal cased box. It's about 14 inches long. And as I said, it weighs about three and a half kilos, about seven pounds. So not exactly small, but not exactly big. Uh, right, so starting with the front here. So on the top here, we have a battery selector for user lithium, uh, flood-loaded acid gel, and AGM. There's a battery operating light and a fault light. So steel container. And on one end we have, this end we have, go this way, the uh, battery in and battery out terminals. They are PP, Anderson PP75s and uh, you need to connect them to the batteries with, with this type of connector. Now, in UK and Europe, you buy the unit and you can buy uh, a selection of cables, uh, five foot or 10 foot, uh, two, uh, two pairs with Anderson connectors, quite expensive uh, to, to connect it all together. In the US, I think it comes with the cables already, but of course the pricing will reflect that as well. I didn't get the cables when this came to me, um, and so I went out and bought uh, a set of Anderson connectors, and I have the cable that I will use uh, here. So that's that saved me about 75% um, of the cost that Renogy would charge me for the two cables, bear that in mind. So we'll come back to that in a little while. The other end has these two ports, the CAN bus uh, connectors, and the three terminals to connect the battery voltage sensor, the battery temperature sensor, and the ignition terminal as well. The CAN bus connector, this is, this is to connect um, other Rego products in the range. It could also use the RV-C backbone uh, connections within the vans. Most of the most of the product uh, van supplies these days, Mercedes, Chrysler, etc., have these fitted, and you can use that connector to connect all your products together. 
uh, Remy G suggests that you talk to them before you actually try and do that. So there's not an awful lot of information and there aren't any cables available to do that on the on the website. But you can connect them uh, to the Renergy One and the other Rego type products in the range. In UK, that is only a MTT controller. In the US, that is the MTT controller, some solar panels and uh, some other charges. Um, I'll list them below here. So lovely shiny piece, uh, all metal casing. Underneath, it has a very large uh, cooling vane section in black and metal. The instructions suggest that it should be installed in an upright position, presumably with those four screws that came in the packaging, and um, have a six inch gap around it. So there's quite a large space. So I have read that this can run quite hot, and then I've read other people that said they've used it full time, and it doesn't get hot. Um, but given the size of the veins, I would suggest that they probably, they're expecting it, expecting it to run hot. So um, put it in a nice big space. Don't try and squeeze it into a uh, small cabinet because it will just get over hot, overheat and then stop. Not really what you want. Now, you must have a DC to DC charger if you are running a vehicle with a smart alternator. And that's an alternator that um, when you start the engine will run and make sure the starter, starter battery is powered up and then it will shut down free well. And that's to try and save emissions uh, and your fuel bill and uh, uh, lots of other good stuff. And also, you might have a regenerative system, rege regenerative braking system, so as you brake, that'll also generate electricity, which will pump back into the battery. If you have that type of system, it is impossible to charge your house batteries through, through the alternator and through these smart relays or um, through a voltage sensing relay. You have to have a DCC charger because this will convince the smart alternator that the main battery isn't charged and needs to keep switching on and therefore that will propagate juice from the starter battery through this and provide power to your house battery. You should also use, well, in fact, you have to use one of these also if you're using lithium batteries because the old style of the VSR and the split charge relays would only take an 80% charge from the alternator to put into the batteries and that is not the right voltage or the, the size of the voltage that you require or the charging profile that the lithium batteries require. So you couldn't really charge a lithium battery successfully from an alternator direct, um, direct directly powered through those relays. They need a charging profile and so the DC to DC chargers will provide that for you. If, like me, you're running an old alternator and you've been running AGM batteries, then again, my advice would be, is if you can afford it, migrate from the old VSR uh, split charge relays to a DC to DC battery charger because it will charge your batteries to 100% and keep them in good order. So that would be my advice. However, because Renergy have given me all this kit, as full disclosure, we will be installing this along with our Renergy uh, 200 amp hour batteries, two banks, two of them, and a uh, Renergy solar panel kit and a Renergy battery inverter charger. So watch out for later because I'll, I'll open those boxes and show you what's involved. And I'll also be doing some installation videos on how we actually fit this within our van. And you might be able to find something that to help you with yours. Okay, guys, so now we're going to talk about the installation. So we'll be using the uh, Anderson P575, uh, PP75 connectors, and I'm going to be using six mil square cable. Uh, these uh, will, from the output of the Renergy, will go to via fuse, a and fuse, to the house batteries. And the input, according to the, the instruction manual, will be from the starter battery through a 90 amp ANL fuse into the unit here. Renergy in the UK and in the Americas only provide ANL fuses um, up to 60 amps and then after 60 amps it's 100 amp, 200 amp, 300 amp and 400 amp. So you can either go and get a 100 amp, uh, 200, two lots of 100 amps to fit here in and out for the inverter as long as your cable is going to be thick enough and can cope with a 100 amp 
uh, flow or you can buy the 80 and the 90 amps specifically from another retailer to install I've got these which are the waterproof ones um, I'm not probably going to put them in, in, in the engine bay um, but uh, I think it's they're a nice smart cover just to keep it nice and tidy and, and safe for the installation that I have so going through we have a selection you need to be able to set this product up there are no there are no uh, gauges on it there are no meters or anything you have to download the app to your phone and it is uh, already fitted with Bluetooth and uh, if you have to install the product you can set a very a set of um, settings around how you would uh, install this program so so firstly I am going to choose lithium because that's the battery setup that I'm going to do and I don't have to do very much else after that there is an ability to set up some unit user specific parameters if you're using um, uh, an unusual type battery or you can just use the gel or the AGM settings um, and if you're still using flooded landed acid this will cover it too and so that's fairly simple the Bluetooth program to set it up is fairly simple um, you have to find a positive lead for the ignition you can either take off a uh, point off section two on the uh, car ignition or if you have a um, power source going to say uh, a cigarette lighter uh, which only comes on when you start the engine that's also a, a relatively good source to provide the ignition trigger um, if you are going to use the CAN bus functions you need to talk to energy directly there are some cables to join it up and there is a uh, combined unit that will link into the Renergy one m1 display unit and i'm hopeful that in the later programs we'll be installing that so we can see how that will actually work so that's kind of it really um it's about 14 inches long it's about three and a half kilos in weight seven pounds it needs to be in a big space and apparently it is plug and play so this is graham i'm really looking forward to putting this in with the other kit and seeing how it all works uh and i hope that you have enjoyed this uh keep an eye out for the other uh, products I will be reviewing and uh, the installations of all of these products in the van uh, further down the road. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.